Praise the Lord, everybody. We are so glad you joined us for today's program. Welcome to Houston Celebration. We have a very special program planned today and tomorrow. We have as our guest today, Irvin Baxter of End Time Ministries. Let me tell you, Irvin is going to be talking to us today about the fulfillment, the prophetic fulfillments of 2006 and anticipation of what's going to be fulfilled in 2007. You do not want to miss one minute of these programs. You might want to even have a notepad handy. I'm Pastor Mike Anderson of Christ Church. We had Irvin with us last night. We had a tremendous prophecy seminar, powerful move. I would like to tell you real quickly, starting Tuesday night at 7.30, Christ Church is offering Understanding the End Time each Tuesday night for the next 10 weeks. You can come and hear Irvin Baxter by video at Christ Church. We encourage you to come. Everybody's welcome. Well, Irvin, we're happy you're here. You're no stranger to Houston, Texas. Thank you, Marcus and Joni, for making this possible. We appreciate it so much. Daystar Television Network, call the prayer line. It's up there on the screen. Irvin, God bless you. Amen. Amen. We got so many exciting things to talk about that we just went right into the program today to give you plenty of time to share with the people. Interesting enough, you were with us back in August of 2005, and you actually on this program stated some upcoming events prophetically spoken of in the Bible that have since then begun to transpire and also in incremental ways be fulfilled. So we're going to go into uh, a, a run-in that we can talk about and comment. Right here, right now, Irvin Baxter in August of 2005. That the West Bank is going to end up being a place of slaughter controlled by the Palestinians. Sharon is building a fence all the, to divide the West Bank from Israel. Now, if you're going to build a fence, do you build the fence 10 feet from your back porch or do you build the fence where you intend for your border to be that says nobody comes any further? It's obvious. He's building it very close to the 1967 border. Uh, but he's encompassing a few of these settlements with high concentrations of populations such as Malay Adumim, it's a settlement of 32,000 Jewish people, the Gush Etzion block, a city by the name of Ariel. There's a few areas he's taken in, but he's gotten previous approval from the Bush administration so that the Bush administration is going to keep the UN Security Council from passing a resolution against Israel and cause the international sanctions to be levied. So he has done this, his homework on this whole thing. He's building a separation wall right now and it's going to end up with Brian. Now, that's one thing you know. Brother Irvin Baxter, publisher of End Time Magazine and head of the End Time Ministries made that statement on this program in August of 2005. Brother Baxter, tell us what's happened since then. Well, just to bring our viewers up to date, what prophecy we're specifically referring to here. Jesus gave the prophecy in Matthew 24, 15 through 21. He said, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet back in Daniel 9, 27, then let those which be in Judea flee, mm -hmm. because then shall be great tribulation such as never has been before, nor ever again shall be. Now, if you don't know where Judea is, the prophecy becomes irrelevant to you. But once you realize that Judea is the occupied territories that Israel captured in the 67 war, which the United Nations says Israel must give back mm. to the Palestinians, then you can understand why Jesus gave the prophecy for the times just ahead. This is a prophecy not yet fulfilled. But the area of Judea, Omerk, the present Prime Minister of Israel, knows that ultimately if he's going to get peace in the Middle East, the international community will demand that he return the area called Judea or the West Bank mm. uh, to the Palestinians. So he already is building a security wall. It was actually begun under Ariel Sharon before his stroke. And he is building a wall from the northern tip of Israel all the way to the southern tip of Israel. I think it's 700 uh, kilometers uh, that they're going to build this wall. That wall is now 60 to 70% done. 
and we actually had pictures at our prophecy conference. I see they're on the screen again right now. Uh, that that's the actual wall. Those that wall is 25 feet high. And as you see to your left, that's Judea. To the right is Jerusalem. And that's hmm. the area that Jesus, 2,000 years ago, sat on the Mount of Olives, not very far from that wall, and said the people that live out here in this area called Judea will have to run for their lives. Well, Israel plans, they're building that fence, and they're planning on withdrawing. Well, since we were here in 05, uh, they've made huge progress. I understand the total wall is supposed to be done by the end of 2007 right now. And they're moving very rapidly to set things up so that they can actually implement peace in the Middle East. Once they implement peace in the Middle East, uh, or at least some kind of an agreement supposed to provide peace, which will be supported by the United Nations once that's done, that starts the clock ticking for the final seven years to Armageddon. It looks like that's in the offing right now. And that, and that is called the covenant or the confirmation of so, the covenant? Yes. The Bible teaches that the Antichrist and the world community will confirm a covenant with Israel for a, a seven-year period. And when they confirm that covenant, the covenant is, is speaking of the Abrahamic covenant. In Genesis 15, 18, God entered into covenant with Abraham and said, the land on which you are right now is going to belong to you and your seed forever after you. Well, that's the big dispute right now. Does Israel have a right to exist? Uh, Mr. Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, the president of Iran, likes to say every time he gets a chance, we're going to wipe Israel off the mm. face of the map. Well, another man said that before him. His name was Saddam Hussein. He's obviously not going to get the job done. <laughs> you know, Saddam Hussein actually had clothes made like the clothes Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, used to wear. And he had a chariot made like the chariot that Nebuchadnezzar used. And he actually had a picture of himself in that clothing, standing in that chariot, because he wanted to be Nebuchadnezzar reincarnated. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar was the last one to destroy Jerusalem and to carry the Jews away captive into Babylon. And Saddam Hussein wanted to do it all over again. Well, Mr. Ahmadinejad, when he says that he's going to wipe Israel off the face of the map, I'll look him right in the eye and say, you'll never do it because the prophecies of the Bible say you'll never do it. Now, there is trouble ahead for Israel. And we are moving toward the Battle of Armageddon, the Great Tribulation period. But Israel is never going to be driven out of the nation of Israel long after Ahmadinejad is gone. And if I'm back here in a couple of years, we'll roll this tape today. That's right. Because I'm telling you, Mr. Ahmadinejad will be gone a long time and Israel will still be in existence. Brother Irvin, give us give us a quick rundown of because this is the beginning of 2007. Give us a quick rundown of what you see as some of the important or major prophetic fulfillments of 2006. So when as we go through the program, we we sort of have a chronological order of what's happening. In order to help us think about this, Pastor Anderson, number one, there are six or seven major areas of prophetic fulfillment. Mm -hmm. You've got the prophecy that we're moving into a one world government right now. Uh, the catchphrase for that is globalization. One world government, globalization. And then there are prophecies about the nation of Israel. That includes the confirmation of the covenant. There's another major prophecy that there will be a temple built on the Temple Mount. There's also a prophecy that we're going to have a global religious system. And that's the reason we're reading stories of overtures being made between Catholicism and Islam. They're hoping to somehow amalgamate the religions of the world so that we can all say, I'm okay, you're okay, and you're a Muslim, I'm a Christian, we all worship the same God. That's the theory, that's not the fact. Because uh, Muslims do not believe that Jesus was God. So how in the world can we as Christians say we worship the same God when they don't even believe in our God, Jesus Christ? Uh, and there are other differences. For example, they do not believe that Jesus died on the cross. They don't believe in the atonement. Well, you take the atonement out of Christianity and you don't have Christianity That's anymore. Right. That's so right. there are major conflicts, but in the effort to join together the people of the world to somehow get away from war and get into harmony, the theory is one world government, one world religion, one world economy, 
And part of that one world economy is to set up a system where that economy can be administered. And we already have the World Trade Organization, which does basically preside over the world's economy. The World Trade Board has the power to find the United States millions of dollars and has done that over the last couple of years for trade infractions that we commit. Their meetings are held behind closed doors. No journalists are allowed there. It's a very powerful thing. We are in world economy right now. But the Bible prophesies that ultimately that world economy is going to come down to every human being on earth being given a number that they will use for buying and selling. And when we were uh, on the program before, and I know we're going to talk about this later, we talked about the Real ID Act and 